time on Andy's motorcycle obsessions. We're off to a small town motorcycle show to meet a man with an enormous heart. So I left home and headed down to Sorrel. So Sorrel is a small township, not far out of Hobart. Unfortunately, with the open face helmet, the uh, microphone combination just wasn't working. It was just too buffety. So, um, I, but yeah, I just had a really nice, quiet ride down to Sorrel. There was you know, a lot of really nice looking bikes there, uh, as per last year, a lot of Harley Davidsons and um, that seems to be a fairly common theme with uh, this particular show. So I'm here today at the Rise and Shine Motorcycle Show. And this is Ken Harrison. Ken Harrison is the organiser and he's managed to achieve three things today. He's brought joy into the life of uh, some of the elderly folk here at the, at the aged care facility. He's brought a heap of motorcycles together and, most importantly, we're here to raise awareness for melanoma, Ken. Yeah, we certainly are here. Um, I have a passion for raising awareness about melanoma um, because in Tasmania, melanoma... Um, is a very prevalent cancer. It is, from memory, the third highest or most frequently diagnosed cancer in women and the fourth most frequently diagnosed cancer in men. And we sit at the fourth highest, as in Tasmania sits, at the fourth highest um, melanoma rate or diagnosed melanoma rate in Australia, that's, which that's, is that's pretty that amazing. That would surprise a few people, I'd imagine, that given that we're down in the south and don't see a lot of sun. Uh, it does surprise a lot of people. It certainly surprised me. Um, one of my uh, reasons for becoming so passionate um, was that I myself have had and am being treated for malignant melanoma. Um, and when I was diagnosed, I was introduced to a lovely lady from Melanoma Tasmania uh, a new organisation um, that's only about to launched in October 2014. So uh, it's still a very new organisation and it was done in response to um, most of the people involved actually have been associated with someone that they love uh, or themselves having melanoma. Um, they are not overly well funded by government um, to my knowledge and so any money that we can raise is good money and so I approached my boss um, here at Ningana and said we could uh, put on a bike show, bring some enjoyment or some activities to the uh, residents of Ningana as well as uh, hopefully raise a bit of awareness for melanoma as well as maybe a little bit of money for melanoma Tasmania. Um, and that's been the whole heart and goal of the whole process. Well, I think you've achieved that very nicely. Um, so, Ken, is there, what's the motorcycle connection? Um, I've been riding motorcycles since I was 18. 
Uh, I started off in a little Z200. Uh, my father used to describe me as looking like a gorilla on a peanut. <laughs> um, but um, I have, uh, I cannot remember a time that I haven't had a motorcycle in my shed. Um, sometimes those years have been with motorcycle in the shed that doesn't run. Um, oh, but that, that still counts. Yeah. That's still valid. Uh, I'm, but I'm passionate about motorcycles. Um, and what I find is the motorcycle community as a whole is one of the most giving and generous communities um, anywhere. And they always come together and they always come together for a good cause. And as hopefully um, you've seen today, Andy, that they have come together. And in the past two years where we've held the um, Rise and Shine Bike Show, They've come together on those days, but you know, uh, there's lots of rides and runs that happen throughout the year, which stamps to me very strongly that the motorcycle community is a passionate community about uh, fundraising, charity, and good deeds. Yeah, agreed, absolutely. And is there, Ken, is there any way that anybody who wants to contribute to either melanoma Tasmania or skin cancer um, research in any way, is there a way that they can they can do that? Uh, via some donations via websites or anything like that? Melanoma Tasmania has a website. Now, Melanoma Tasmania isn't involved in research. The credo or one of the reasons for setting up Melanoma Tasmania, or my understanding from talking to Di, was that um, we need to have Tasmanians supporting Tasmanians. So it's all about support, supply, providing support, be it with education sessions, be it with um, someone to talk to when you've been diagnosed with melanoma and you don't really know where to go. Mm, that'd be important, um, that'd be. So it's, uh, as I said, it's not about raising money for research. It's about raising money so that Melanoma Tasmania can continue with supporting Tasmanians. As I said, the thing that we're passionate about is Tasmanians supporting Tasmanians. Yep, right. Clear. Um, now, you recently did a lap of Tasmania with your bike too, didn't you? You went, got the opportunity to, to visit a couple of schools and get the message out there because you were telling me earlier, Ken, that the target, the key target audience is those kids below 15, isn't it? The um, melanoma itself is the most frequently diagnosed cancer in the 15 to 39 year old age bracket. So if we can strike while the iron's hot, so to speak, that younger group, that group that is below 15, below 16, make them very aware of sun safety, very aware of their skin health, then hopefully we will prevent the progression onto melanoma. So that's why we've had a target of that age bracket. Right. Very good. All right, well, Ken, thank you very much. It's, uh, I've enjoyed the day today. There's some nice bikes out there. I'm going to get back out and have another look. And, of course, the, we've got scones and coffee and everything happening inside as well. So, um, sorry. And I've got to go and give out some trophies. You've got to go give out some trophies. All right.
So one of the bikes that jumped out of the show here for me today was this beautiful Indian dark horse. It's brand new. Uh, yes, it is. It's one of the demo bikes from the dealership. Right. So this is this is Leonie, and she's a, an Indian devotee. In fact, you organise the Indian social rides here. What's, yes, Indian uh, Motorcycle Riders Group. Indian Motorcycle Riders Group. So now in Tasmania, in Hobart, we have uh, Ta Indian Motorcycles Tasmania, a dealership here that, that Sean mm -hmm. is running. And it's offering an alternative to the V-twin um, genre out there. And from all accounts, they're going very well, aren't they? Yeah, they are. They're going very well. Nice. Very well. But, well, they're producing a beautiful bike. What can you tell me about it? Okay. Just go nuts. Let's go nuts. Yeah, I'll do what? my very best. Um, the larger Indians, such as this, run a Thunderstroke 111 inch engine, oh. so 18, 13 cubic centimetres. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess for people like yourself, about 159 off the back wheel. So um, they're very, very linear on their takeoff um, and um, progression through the gears. Um, most, you know, you, you can't even really feel it. For the, for the experienced rider, you wouldn't even feel it. They're a beautiful bike to ride. Mm -hmm. And I feel that um, I think the only way I can say about the engine itself is it seems to be under stressed. It just goes. Does it easily? Just goes. Does it so easily? So easily. And I mean, this particular model is probably more of the base model of the larger uh, Indians. And um, so well, is it more of an entry level? Uh, entry of the la yeah. larger, the Scout's definitely the entry level, yeah, the entry right. level Indian. Yep. Um, but this is the, probably the uh, barest of the large ones and then it moves up through the Chief, the Chieftains, they've got the Springfields. They all run essentially the same engines and then it comes with more, ex more, more accessories and, and what makes more options. You know, yeah. Yeah, more options. Um, so yeah, they're you know, absolutely beautiful, beautiful bike to ride. I'm so lucky to be able to have access to be able to ride bikes like this, you know, now yeah. and again. Um, so your bike? Mm -hmm. My beautiful bike, yes. Yes. How does it compare um, to Tux? Now, well, how does this compare to Tux? Yeah. Obviously, definitely heavier. Right. Um, the, the, this, uh, when you look at the Scout stock, um, then you, you probably don't have the same punch as what we've done to mine, but this is definitely a far more powerful bike. But I found today when I was looking at it, interestingly, the rev ranges for the speeds that the I was similar? doing were very similar. Yeah. So, um, and that's a 69 inch. Um, so that's what 11.33 cubic centimetres, and this is a substantially larger engine. But I guess pulling the weight and yeah, just the whole match the torque you know, curve a bit yeah, better for the weight. Yeah. Mm. So, um, but you know, it comes with all the the, the 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 modern things people like to ride with the ABS brakes, and, oh, yeah. yep. and it's incredibly well balanced. That's the other thing. Yeah. You know, uh, I I would have to argue I would find you hard push to drop this bike um, because it's set so low. You've got all all the power. Mm. Um, and they certain they make them so people will look at this and say I can't ride this because I'm too short. Yep. And they actually have um, seating arrangements for shorter stature. Okay. And then they have the seating arrangements for longer stature. So they can almost custom build it you to can suit your, your your size. Absolutely. That's a great Absolutely. Thing. And I think they're they're really just positive aspects to owning a larger bike. And I gotta say, when you're riding things like this, you feel positively majestic. Yeah. They basically can ride themselves sometimes. Yeah, right. And it's got cruise <laughs> control. Um, yes. Yeah. Oh, this is yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. Sorry, yeah. yeah. Cruise control. I've never even thought of using it. So. And uh, I was, it was interesting to see today because I came here last year mm -hmm. and it was just a, a sea of Harley Davidson. And yeah. it was again this year. However, it was a percentage of Indian motorcycles here. Yeah, there we, was probably yeah. half oh, what a dozen. We had, we had a Chief, so Dutch's Chief, and there was a Vintage. There was my Scout. Yeah. There was this, although this wasn't entered. This was for show. So and and then some victories as well. There's some pretty beautiful victories as well. Which I'll get. Uh, Hello. Oh, oh, got, got the BSA running. <laughs> got, <laughs> just need to push start. British. <laughs> one best British that boy. Nice looking boy. Yeah. So no, it's it's this is they are beautiful bikes to ride. I've ridden yep. um, the um, big chief, and I haven't ridden, but they're all the big ones are essentially the same. All right, no, well, thank you, Leone, for giving us a look at the, at no, the no uh, problems dark at all. horse. It is a bit of a dark horse. Yeah, it is beautiful. Yeah, it's it's beautifully blacked out. A bit of a thin end of the wedge. They're starting to you know, make a few inroads, and I think people are looking for alternatives. And, Absolutely. And there's certain, a certain amount of nostalgia, too, with the brand that, um, yeah. that people can connect with as well. So, yeah, I just love much. it. Not yeah. a problem at all, Andy. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Very good.
Congratulations. One and one for another day, another year. Yeah, like I said, it's only a very small show. Did a lot of Harley Davidsons. So the Social Motorcycle Club, uh, we're here earlier and then they all left. Um, Leon Culpert is the uh, organiser of that little group and they had a ride up to Swansea, I think. And Leon was very kind and he donated some books uh, of his to, um, to Melanoma Tasmania so that they can help raise a few funds to the sale of those books, which was very nice of him. So what a wonderful day and uh, what a wonderful man and he truly is an inspiration, uh, Ken, and uh, he's doing a very good thing there, raising awareness for melanoma and the poor bloke is suffering really badly with it and um, you know, we wish him all the, all the, all the best. He um, did mention to me earlier that the whole reason why they target that 15 year old age group or those hot young high school kids is that when you're in private school, they get hammered into them about how they should, you know, no hat, no play, and uh, slip, slop, slap, and all of the, all of the sun smart messages. And then they become teenagers and develop these attitudes, and and they just need that you know, to be shocked into reality, I think. And and that's what Ken was aiming to do when he did his lap of Tasmania. In, went around and um, to the different schools and spoke to them and gave them a, a harsh reality, a real wake-up call about the dangers of, um, of melanoma and, and the best way to avoid being found in the same situation that he's in. And uh, yeah, I just want to thank him and uh, everyone else that was there today and hopefully he's raised a few dollars towards melanoma Tasmania. And uh, I want to thank you for, uh, for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. And I'll catch you next time on Andy's Motorcycle Obsessions. Bye for now.